Welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at some more graphing with exponential functions. So just a reminder, um, exponential function is going to be in this form here, a plus b to the x. And the really the important thing here is that this x is in the exponent. Okay. Um, today, we're going to look at also some transformations. So we can also move this graph up or down. Um, so if we have a regular graph of a times b to the x, if we add or subtract something to that, um, that's just going to change all of our y values by that amount. Um, so it's going to look like the same graph, um, but just moved up or down um, along our y-axis there. Um, so let's take a look at some of these pieces, um, keeping in mind that this a value here is going to be our y-intercept. And this B value here is our constant ratio, what we're multiplying by. Um, and that Y-intercept here will be affected if we have this plus or minus something, um, because that is going to shift us up or down. Right. If we take our y values and add 2 to all of them, they're all going to move up 2. Um, if we take our y values and subtract 3 from them, they're all going to move down 3. So that's also going to affect our asymptote. So our asymptote will change if we have a different k value there. All of the ones that we looked at previously had an asymptote at y equals 0. So that asymptote will just move with your graph if you have a k value. So let's start just with our graph of y equals 3 times 2 to the x. So again, we're going to start by making a table of values for our x values and our y values are our function values. So if I plug in some negatives and some positives, um, we're going to give a decent picture of our graph. Remember, you can always extend that um, if you need to. So let's start with negative 2. So if I have 3 times 2 to the negative 2, um, remember the negative moves it to the denominator and then makes it positive. So we have 3 times 1 over 4, which is just 3 fourths. So negative 2, we're going to be at 3 fourths. Three fourths, which is more than half, then less than one. So negative two here, that would be halfway. So we're a little bit more than halfway, halfway between halfway and one. Um, negative one, again, we're going to go to the denominator. So we have three times a half, which is three halves or one and a half. So at negative one, we're at one and a half. Okay, at zero, we should be at three. So we're here. And at 1, we're taking 3 times 2 to the 1, that's 6. 3 times 2 squared, that's 4, times 3 is 12. So we end up with all of those values there. So we're 1, we're at 6, 2, we're at 12. We're doubling each time, so at 3 we'd be 12 times 2, which is 24, which is off our graph. So here we still have that same asymptote at... Um, y equals 0. So we're going to approach 0 but not cross it, making a nice little curve there. Here's our asymptote at y equals 0. Um, and there is our graph. So now we're going to utilize this graph to help us graph this next one. So let's zoom out a little bit so you can see both of them at the same time. Okay, so notice the only difference in these two functions is this extra plus 2. So we'd still do all of the same things for our points. But then we are just going to add 2 to all of our y values. So instead of being at 3 fourths, we're going to be at 2 and 3 fourths. Instead of being at 1 and a half, we're going to be 1 and a half plus 2, so 3 and a half. At 0, instead of being at 3, we'll be at 5. We're just taking each of these values and adding 2 to them, right? Because these values would be the same. And then we have this additional plus 2. At 1, instead of 6, we'll get 6 plus 2, which is 8. 2 instead of 12, we'll be at 14. So we're going to look at those values as we graph here. So at negative 2, we're at 2 and 3 quarters, 3 and a half, 1 is at 8. Zero is at five. Let's plot the correct points. One is at eight. There we actually go. Um, and then two is at 14. Let's just get rid of that. 
two is at 14. And then again, three would be at 24 plus two, which is off our graph. Okay, so here's where the big thing has happened that our asymptote here is now here. It moved up to with us. So our asymptote is now the line y equals two. So instead of approaching zero, we're gonna approach the line y equals two, which will also affect our range. So our domain here is still all real numbers, just like it has been for all of our um, exponential functions. But our range, um, our y value here, and the smallest it can be is two, and it actually can't be that two, it's never gonna reach there. And then it goes on and on up forever. So that shift also affects our range, so be careful with that as well. Okay, let's look at one more here together. Um, so we have this exponential function um, that does have this shift. Um, so we could start off with that right away and say, instead of our asymptote being at y equals zero, it's gonna move down one from that, and it's gonna be down here at y equals negative one. Right, we're gonna approach that negative one. Let's make a table um, with our x and y values here. Let me on a little bit so you can see better. Um, if I plug in some negatives and some positives, we'll see what happens with our graph. So remember the negative is gonna take that and flip it. Um, let's practice this one with our calculator just so we get a little more comfortable with that. Um, if I put in um, two times one fourth, make sure that's in parentheses, to the, the carrot button is right here, negative two. Um, if I'm thinking about this, negative is gonna make it four. So you'll have four squared. 16 times two, that's 32 minus one. I should get 31. Um, but let me see if that matches. Yep. Um, think through that process, make sure it makes sense. Okay, um, then we're just gonna change this negative two to a negative one, okay? And we get seven. Change that negative one to a zero. We get one, let's make sure that makes sense. So normally my y-intercept would be at two, two minus one is one, okay? Change that zero to a one. We get negative 0.5, make sure you write that as a, or think about it as a fraction. Um, change that one to a two. Negative, ooh, 0.875, if you don't know that one, um, use the second fraction to decimal and that's seven eighths, that can help you plot it a little better, but also the 8.75 is also acceptable. Okay, so let's plot these points, see what it looks like. Uh, so negative two, we're at 31, negative one at seven, zero at one, one at negative a half, so you can already see that we're coming down below this axis here and we're approaching this line y equals negative one never actually reaching it okay so thinking about our domain still all real numbers our range here is from negative one up forever okay um so we're looking at that where does it come to it comes to that negative one that comes from the shift right there um, that is all I have for you in this video. Thanks so much for watching.